AviationPros.com is the portal website for AMT, airport business, and ground support worldwide magazines. Visit daily for breaking news, industry blogs, and insightful articles from our magazine's editorial team. And don't forget to sign up for our publication's daily e-newsletters. It's all at AviationPros.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Aviation Pros Podcast. I'm Joe Petrie, Editorial Director for Aviation Pros. Two years after the pandemic began, the aviation industry is finally starting to return to some semblance of normal. People are flying, airports are humming with activity, and leaders are looking to the future once again. This also means airport manager associations are getting into gear and lobbying their state lawmakers to make sure their facilities are meeting the needs of their municipalities. I recently spoke with Abe Forney, General Manager for Rosecrans Memorial Airport and Aviation Advisory Chair with the Missouri Airport Managers Association, which held its first Aviation Day at the Missouri State Capitol in nearly two years and what it took to prepare for such a return. So the first question for you today is, tell me with the advent of the having the event again, how have Missouri's airport's needs changed in the past two years? Well, I would say that uh, the airport needs are always evolving. You know, if it's if it's not September 11th and TSA regulations, it's it's COVID. And uh, with any federal entity, when something like this, COVID or or September 11th happens, there's always going to be a reaction from the federal government. So our role as airport managers and uh, and making sure that the airports are compliant with all the regulations are are always changing so for instance with the uh, with the airport managers that do have a 139 airport regulation so that that's like a Kansas City International or, or St. Louis and there are some small airports like my our, ours at Rosecrans that that comply with these regulations um, you have to adapt to what the the FAA uh, is asking, for instance, online um, documentation that they review. We have to submit that. So, so the needs over the last couple of years have just kind of changed on adapting to how the federal government now conducts business. So then, tell me, what messages were you taking to the lawmakers at this Aviation Day event? You know, this this year we didn't have a, a major objective. I, I think what our mission is to go to State Aviation Day is always to get face time with our representatives. You know, the airports throughout Missouri uh, are worth $11.1 billion annually to uh, annual impact to, to the state. So we, we have over 100,000 jobs, you know, 195,000 tons of transport that we we fly annually. So I think the need for us to go give uh, the representatives some face time and make sure that they know who we are and, uh, and that we're fighting for them as well as what they're doing for us is, is making sure that our infrastructure is is up to standards with the FAA. So I, I believe it's more FaceTime this year. It's just making sure that they know that we're out there and uh, and how important the aviation industry is to the state. You know, it's been two years since you were able to hold the last one. How did the process change for your organization? I mean, were is it different in how you prepared for it or how did anything, or was it pretty much the same process? No, it really wasn't the same process. Uh, again, just like any other regulation with COVID, comes different regulations and then also the ethics committee you know the ethics committee gave us a rule a couple years ago that we cannot give any representative gifts so in the past we have taken the rotunda and put put up uh, posters and and serve food to the representatives and their staff members you know every everybody that breaks bread together and, and sits down and have a has a conversation i believe you know you get your point across a little bit better so they put that restriction on us where we could not feed them food, uh, but we did find a way around it. So we asked some of our local representatives, uh, Representative Bill Faulkner and uh, and Representative Hageman, uh, or S Senator Hageman, excuse me, uh, were asked by myself to to help, and they collected money 
from their campaign funds uh, as long or as well as about 40 other representatives uh, to help pay for this meal. So it, it's always evolving, trying to figure out how to, to get things done uh, ethically and through the feds. But th this year we just had to, we had to find a new way to get that, that meal served. And, and that was thankfully through the representatives using their campaign funds. So situations like that are always changing at state aviation day because the rules are always changing. Those rules, those are something that will keep evolving. But after restarting this event, after having a couple of years to think about it, change the ways you're doing it. Tell me, how do you, could you see this evolving as it goes forward? I mean, and making sure that you guys are being able to uh, get your message across with the lawmakers. Yeah, I think, uh, I think what we're doing is working pretty well, but every legislative cycle has a, a new, a new face there, you know, representatives move on since there are term limits now. So I, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know how it's going to continue to evolve. But what I would like to see is, is us have the ability to continue to go to the Capitol building, be introduced on the floor, be able to sit down and break bread with those representatives and tell them, tell them how important the airports are to, to the state. And so my last question for you today is, you, Missouri is not alone in uh, restarting these events and getting going with uh, aviation days at the state capitals. So going through this, what advice would you give to other state associations looking to restart their events and what they think and should think about and prepare for before they uh, go to the capitol at their members? Yeah, I think just like any other speech, you know, make sure that you are prepared. Make sure you have make sure you have a list of uh, aviation trust fund overviews. That's basically what we put out at our state aviation day. So when we go to the representatives, we have a cheat sheet and it says, you know, the, the trust fund has created over a hundred thousand jobs and uh, $11 billion worth of economic impact statewide. So make sure that those other uh, states kind of use us as Missouri as, as a, a, a guide, you know, make sure that you have your talking points ready to go when you talk to your representatives. It's okay to give them FaceTime, but if you give them FaceTime and then you also give them a big dollar amount that uh, the airports have have been giving statewide, something tangible that they can they can go to their other constituents or representatives and say, hey, we need to we need to help these airports out because this is what they're doing for our state economically. So as long as as long as these airport managers or other people have a good talking point, I think that's uh, that's crucial. Wonderful. Well, it sounds like you guys had a very successful event. Yeah, it was wonderful. And uh, and we look forward to doing it again next year. And uh, yeah, maybe many years to come. Thanks again for listening to today's podcast. For the latest policy and legal information airport managers need to know, make sure to subscribe to the Airport Business Daily Newsletter. I'm Joe Petrie. We'll see you next time.